Well, our next guest joins a long list of conservatives who have been censored by big tech. His Twitter account was temporarily suspended for what the platform says violating its rules on graphic violence for a picture that's been up for over a month. Joining us now is Montana Senator Steve Dane. Senator, good to see you. Glad to join you, Sean. I, I think the people of Montana are going to be a little uh, offended that was graphic violence. That, to me, sounds like something that every Montanan probably has, uh, has a picture of. They, 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 they suspended you there at Twitter for those rules, uh, I, as I said, about graphic violence in profile images. I want to put up what that picture is that people can see. It's you and your wife there. Uh, and you had it up since January 2nd. They gave you no notice that it was a problem. I know that you've been back up now. So explain what they gave you as a rationale for the violation. And how did you get back up on Twitter? Well, just to put some perspective around this, you know, hunting and fishing is a way of life for so many Americans. And that's, that's the way we ride in Montana. I've been hunting and fishing since I was a little kid. Every fall, my wife and I and our kids go out, and we love to antelope hunt, deer hunt, elk hunt. And that picture was of one of our antelope hunts from last October. We harvested a couple of beautiful bucks. I posted that in early January, my profile pic, last night at 11 p.m. with no warning, suddenly locked out with this basic message from Twitter. It's like, either take that profile pic down or you're not getting your Twitter account back because it violated this you know, graphic violence and adult contact provision. I mean, it's ridiculous. You look at that picture, you laugh. I mean, that's America right there. So we, uh, it created a firestorm. Uh, there was all kinds of backlash against this censorship of my Twitter account. And let me tell you something, Sean, I gotta give credit to Elon Musk. He reached out to me and he saw it was going on. He personally got involved. He reinstated my Twitter account and they also said, I'm going to work to change these policies. Basically, what's happening, Sean, is San Francisco and a big tech company is trying to impose their values on the rest of America. These people who preach tolerance are intolerant of our American way of life. And I think they should be a little more inclusive and perhaps embrace a little more diversity by saying, hey, you know what happens out in Montana? We should also consider that to be part of America. Well, that's it's right. great that Elon Musk reached out to you. Obviously, that's what he's trying to do is buying Twitter is fix some of those problems. So glad to hear that he is. Um, Senator, I do want to ask you about that as we talk to you about your censorship on Twitter. We here at Newsmax have been deplatformed from DirecTV, as I'm sure you're aware. And I want to just play a clip for you of constitutional law expert Alan Dershowitz on Greta's show last night. Listen to this. Well, clearly, they use economic reasons as a cover for political reasons. Anybody who believes that this was purely an economic decision uh, should buy a bridge in Brooklyn. This clearly at least had elements of uh, partisan and ideological and political bias uh, directed at uh, stations that uh, uh, don't adhere to the views uh, of, of the company. So I think it's just wrong. And I hope they'll reconsider. The important thing is to have the marketplace of ideas open. And I think they ought to reconsider and, and put Newsmax back on and uh, let, let the viewers decide what they want to watch, not some corporate uh, suits make that decision. Senator, this is coming from someone who is quite liberal as well. So that's not a conservative mindset there that you're hearing. Yeah, well, look, we see this across our country. I saw it personally when I was censored as a conservative on Twitter because of something that was absolutely ridiculous that just at face value, look at that picture, you'd say, what's going on? But I, I have reached out personally to the CEO there at, at Newsmax. Uh, I, I reached out as well to the CEO at DirecTV. I have said we need both parties to come together and make sure the decision is based on the facts and not on any political persuasion or any censorship. Clearly, as we look at what's going on in our country, there are plenty of examples of where conservative voices are being censored. Uh, I just want to make sure with this particular conflict between DirecTV and Newsmax that it has nothing to do with politics or ideology. It is purely a contractual negotiation. And again, I reached out to both CEOs and urged them to come together and make a decision based on the facts and not any ideological persuasion. 
You know, Senator, uh, we've talked about how fentanyl has become uh, an issue that has made every state a border state. And obviously, while Montana is far from the southern border, it is clearly being impacted by the flow of fentanyl. I mean, your state has seen a 1,100 increase in fentanyl overdose deaths since 2017. Tell me how you, what you want to hear from the president regarding fentanyl tonight at the State of the Union. Well, Sean, first of all, each member is allowed to bring a guest to the State of the Union. I gave my ticket to Tom Schraps. He is a father from Butte, Montana, that lost his 24-year-old son, Riley, to a fentanyl overdose. This is now the leading cause of death for 18 to 45-year-olds across the country. And you might think about Montana. We're a northern border state. Of course, we made the news here when Biden allows that Chinese spy balloon to come into our state first over our ICBM silos. So you associate Montana with being a northern border state, but we are having a southern border crisis because of President Biden's absolutely failed policies on the southern border. This is a fixable problem. The policies are clear that he needs to put back in place the Trump had in place. He needs to do that plus build the wall. Every border agent will tell you that. But it's the fentanyl coming from Mexican cartels that are flooding across our southern border, and they make their way to Montana within 48 hours after crossing that southern border. The Mexican cartels are alive and active in Montana as well as on the southern border. Yeah, I have a hard time believing that you're going to see the president address fentanyl if you don't address the southern border. And that's what I think people should be paying attention to tonight. Senator Daines, I'm glad to see you're back up on uh, on Twitter. And uh, and I appreciate you calling attention to this big issue with your guest tonight. I'm sorry that it had to be under those circumstances, though. So thank you for being with us. Thank you.